Harriet. Harriet, my other self. My trained self. Yes? I want to talk to you. Well? Oh, Harriet, you look so beautiful today. Am I presentable? Suits me. I've tried to make the best of the good points. My passions are deeper than yours. I can't keep on the mask as you do. I'm crude and real. You're my appearance in the world. I'm what you wish the world to believe you are. You're the part of me that has been trained. I'm your educated self. I am the rushing river. You're the ice over the current. I'm your subtle overtones. But together, we are one woman, the wife of Charles Goodrich. There, I disagree with you. I alone am his wife. Harriet, how could you say such a thing? Certainly, I'm the one who flatters him. I am the one who has to talk to him. If I gave you a chance, you would tell him at once that you dislike him. I don't love him, that's for certain. You leave all the fibbing to me. He doesn't suspect that my calm, suave manner hides your hatred. Considering all the scheming it causes me, it can safely be said that he is my husband. Hmm. Oh, if you love him. I, I haven't any feelings. It isn't my business to love anybody. Why object calling him my husband? I resent your appropriation of a man who is only managed by the cleverness of my artifice. You may be clever enough to deceive him, Harriet. I am still the one who suffers. I can't forget he is my husband. I can't forget that I married Mary John Caldwell. How foolish of you to remember John, just because we met his wife by chance. That's what I want to talk to you about. She will be here at any moment. I want to advise you about what to say to her this afternoon. By all means, tell me now and don't interrupt while she is here. You have the most annoying habit of talking to me while people are present. Sometimes it takes all I have just to keep my poise and make it appear that I'm not listening Impress to you. her. Is that not what I do, impress others? I hate her. She cannot see that. I hate her because she married John. Only after you refused him. Was it my fault I refused him? That's right, blame me. It was your fault. You're the one who said he was too poor and would never be able to do anything with painting. Now look at him. Just returned from eight years in Paris. Famous. It was too big of a gamble then. It was easier to accept Charles' money in position. And then John married Margaret. Within the year. Out of spite. Poor, freckled, gawky-looking child she was. Europe improved her. She was stunning the other morning. Make her jealous. She got me Haughty, cordial, caustic, above all else, let her know we're rich. Oh yes, that is quite easily done now. You must put a bit on it. Never fear. Tell her I love my husband. My husband? Do you want to quarrel with me? I have no desire to quarrel with you. It's quite too uncomfortable. I couldn't get away from you if I tried. You stupid fool! You made me refuse John! I will never forgive you! Never! Don't get me excited. I won't be properly prepared to meet her this afternoon. I could choke you for rubbing me, John. Don't muss me. You don't know how much you made me suffer. It's not my business to have heartaches. You're bloodless. Nothing but a- Be quiet. She can't see that I'm fighting with my inner self. After all my suffering, you say it cost you more than it did me to be married to Charles. It's the pain in my heart. I've paid the price. I've paid. And Charles is not your husband. He is. He isn't. He is. He isn't. I'll kill you. Don't. Don't. You're stronger than I. You're... Say he's mine. He's ours. There she is now. now. Wait. I can't let the telephone girl down there hear my real self. It isn't proper. Show Mrs. Caldwell up. I'm so excited. My heart's in my mouth. A nice state you put my nerves into. Don't let her see you're nervous. Charles is rich and fascinating. Most of our friends make her feel like she needs us. I'll make her ask John to paint us. That's just my thought. If John paints her a portrait, we can wear an exquisite gown and make him fall in love again. Yes. <laughs> oh, Margaret, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> Such a lie. Enchanting to see you too. I'd bet you if I dared. Oh, wasn't our meeting a stroke of luck? I've thought of you often. And to come back and find you living in New York? Mr. Goodrich has many interests here. Flatter her. I know. He's so successful. Tell her we're rich. Oh, what a beautiful lamp. Oh, do you like it? I'm afraid Charles paid an extravagant price for it. I don't believe it. 
I'm sure he must have. How well you are looking, Margaret. You're not. There's circles under your eyes. I haven't eaten since breakfast, and I'm You're looking hungry. very well, too, my dear. Those are hard lines across your face. Are you happy? Don't let her know I'm unhappy. Why shouldn't I look well? My life is full, happy, complete. Hmm, I wonder. Tell her we have an automobile. My life is complete, too. Is you should come visit us in our studio. My husband's going John has been making some excellent he portraits. Some he can barely begin to fill his orders. Tell her we have an automobile. What would you like in your tea? Take cream, it's more filling. No, um, cream. Thanks. Cake? I could eat them all. Oh, sugar? Sugar's more nourishing. Yes, please. I used to drink very sweet coffee in Turkey ever since I've... Oh, have you been in Turkey? Do tell me about it. Quick, change the subject. You must go. You have such good taste in dress. You would enjoy seeing their costumes. Is she going to pass the key? John painted many portraits there. Stop her bragging and tell her we have an automobile. Cake? I oh, thank Thank you. Automobile. Follow up with the costumes about how she'd make a good model for John. Mmm, what delicious cake. There's a chance for the auto. Oh, yes, it is good cake, isn't it? There's always a great many people at Harper's buying it. I sat for 15 minutes in my automobile waiting for my chauffeur to get it. Make her order a portrait. If you stopped at Henderson's, you must have noticed the new gowns at Harper's. Aren't the shop windows alluring these days? Oh, even my chauffeur notices them. I know you have an automobile. I heard you the first time. I notice gowns now with an artist's eye like John does. The one you have on, my dear, is very paintable. Don't let her see you're anxious to be painted. Oh, it's just a little model. Don't seem so anxious to get the order. Perhaps it's not the dress, but the way you wear it that's pleasing to the eye. Some people can wear anything with grace. Yes, I'm very graceful. Oh, you flatter me, my dear. <laughs> on the contrary, Harriet, I have an intense admiration for you. I remember how beautiful you were as a young girl. I can remember getting jealous when John would pay so much attention to you. She's gloating because I lost him. Oh, those were childhood days in a country town. She's only trying to make you think that John is only a country boy. Most great men are from the country. There's a fair chance John will be added to the list. I know it, and I'm bitterly jealous of you. Undoubtedly, he owes much of his success to you, Margaret. Your experience in economy and your ability to endure hardship those first few years in Paris must have been a struggle. She's sneering at our poverty. Yes, we did find life difficult at first. Wasn't a luxurious life a girl has when she marries wealth. Denied Mary Charles for his money. John and I are congenial in our tastes. We were impervious to hardships or any unhappiness. Do you really love him? Is it Did really you true? The romance of starving for his art. She's taunting you. Get even with her. Not for long, Prince Rear soon discovered John's genius. He introduced him to many wealthy Persians who made many orders. Are you telling the truth? Or are you lying? If you had so many opportunities there, you must have had great inducements to come back to the States. We did, just not the kind you think. John has become all the rage among Americans traveling in France. They simply insisted on him coming here. Oh, whom has he painted here? My name's Dora Darnay Throp. As of recent, Miss Dorothy Ainsworth of Oregon. You may not recognize the name. She's a daughter of a coal miner who's wealthy, found gold in Alaska. I dare say there are many Western people we've never heard of. You must have found social life in New York very interesting, Harriet, after the simplicity of our hometown. There's no need to remind us that we both had the same beginning. Of course, Charles's family made everything delightful for me. They have so many connections. Flatter her. I heard you mentioned yesterday. You're so popular. They said you were very clever. Oh, who told you that? Nobody. Oh, confidences should be respected. They said, too, that you are gaining some sort of reputation as a critic of art. I make no pretenses. Are you and Mr. Goodrich interested in the same things, too? <laughs> no. Uh, yes, indeed. Charles and I are inseparable. I wonder. More cake? 
Yes, no, please. Really, I shouldn't. Uh, after my big luncheon, John took me to the Ritz, and we were invited to the Bedfords for dinner. They have such a magnificent house near the drive. I really shouldn't, but they are delicious. I've been happy since I gave up on John. All these years without him, a future without him, no. No. I shall win him back, away from you. Away from you. I sometimes think it's unfair for anyone to be as happy as I am. Charles and I are as much in love as now as when we were when we married. He's just the dearest man in the world to me. No, like John is. I love him so much I'd die for him. I'm going through suffering and hunger just so we can make him great. I love him so much and he worships me. I should like to meet Mr. Goodrich. Bring him to our studio. John has some sketches to show. Not many. All of his portraits have been bought by the subjects. He's making about $4,000 now. Don't pay that much. As much as that. It is not really too much when one considers that John is in the foremost rank of an artist today. A picture he painted could double or triple in value. It's all a lie. He's growing weak with despair. Does he paint all day long? No. He draws advertisements for our bread. When you and your husband come to see us, telephone first. Yeah, that way we can get the advertisements out of the way. Otherwise, you might arrive rival he has a sitter, and John refuses to let me disturb him then. Make her ask for an offer. Lagrange offered to pay me for a thousand. <gasps> Louis Lagrange's reputation isn't worth that. I've heard his work is well mentioned. Yes, he's doing splendid. Oh dear work. me, no. He is praised by the masses, but artists don't even consider him these days. Must I really pay the full price? LaGrange thought I would make a good subject. Let her fish for it. Of course you would. Why don't you let Louis LaGrange paint you, if you trust him? She doesn't seem anxious to have John do it. But if LaGrange isn't accepted by artists, it would be a waste of time to pose for him, wouldn't it? Yes, I think it would. Give us the order. John is so despondent that he can't endure much longer. Help us! Help me! Save us! Don't seem too eager. Well, if Lagrange only charges a thousand, one might consider it. If you really wish to be painted, why don't you give a little more and have a portrait really worthwhile? John might do you for a little under his normal price, considering you two used to be such good friends. Hurrah! That's very nice of you to suggest. Of course I don't know. For God's sake, just say yes. Of course. I don't know whether John would. Me at trying to make us feel small. He is very peculiar in these matters. He sets his value on his work and thinks it's beneath him to discuss price. Still, I might quite delicately mention to him, you know, that as you have many influential friends, Finish what I don't want to say. Help her out. Oh yes, introductions will follow the exhibition of my portrait. No doubt I... Huh, be patronizing. No doubt I shall be able to introduce your husband to his advantage. Saved! If I find John in a propitious mood, I shall take pleasure, for your sake, in telling him about your beauty, just as you are sitting now would be a lovely pose. Don't let her think she's doing this a favor. It will give me pleasure to add my name to your husband's list of patronesses. Hurry, run home and tell John the good news. I little guessed when I came for a pleasant chat about their old times that it would develop into business arrangements. I had no idea, Harriet, that you had any intention of being painted by Lagrange. Well, I just came just in time to rescue you. Hurry, hurry, run home and tell John. You handled the order very neatly. She doesn't suspect that we wanted it. Now, if I'm not satisfied with my portrait, I shall blame you, Margaret, dear. I'm relying upon your opinion of John's talent. She doesn't suspect what you came for. Hurry, run home and tell John! You've always had a brilliant mind, Margaret. Ah, oh, it is you who flatter now. You don't have to stay so long. Hurry home! One does not flatter when one tells the truth. I must be going, or else you'll have me completely under your spell. <laughs> Yes, do go. I have to get just for dinner. Please don't hurry. No, really, I must. But I hope we can see each other often at the studio. I find you so stimulating. <sighs> I HATE YOU!
It is indeed gratifying to find a kindred spirit. I came for your gold. How delightful it is to know you again. I am going to make you and your husband suffer. My best regards to John. He has forgotten all about you. He'll be so happy to receive them. I can hardly wait to talk to him again. Shall I wait then until you send me word? I'll speak to John about it and tell you when to come. I love him! I love him! I'm starving! He's starving! I'm going to take take him away from you! I want your money! And your influence! I'm going to rob you! I've had such a delightful afternoon. It's been such a joy to see you. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. Somebody come and save me from this Make it in I feel it deep